Welcome to the last update of the season. In this update, we're gonna finish up our stone house and we dug out the pipe. You've seen this pipe before. We took it out and we're gonna transform it into new objects because it's made from plastic and it can be recycled. So it's gonna be exciting. But first, wrapping up the house. Quick recap, we discovered this ruin last year and we've been working a lot to transform it back into a house. You can watch the whole process in our videos. And the last video we finished building the ceiling. And today we're gonna finish the entire thing. Enjoy. To line these uh, walls, we're gonna start by this one. Because it's easier and it's raining, so we had to have this weird ass horse system with a tarp over it. It's a mess, but we're starting. Ruben, are you ready? So the purlins are going to come here and we want this to reach the point and for this we have a guide which is kind of straight but straight enough so we have this we see how much we need to fill we see if we need to add some rocks or if it's close enough that we can just put lime and that's what we're going to do for the whole length Yeah, these days are a bit rainy. It was not easy to work. <laughs> One good thing, the water bucket is filling up. But we managed. Let's see. Very nice. Right on the edge. Sorry, video team, for the bad recording. I think this is officially my least comfortable way of working. <laughs> now that I have a bit of an idea of where it is flat, I can just work around it to make it wider and longer. And we'll keep on using the guideline. What you see here is Reuben, she's in some stone, so they fit perfectly. Perfectly, my goodness. Whoa. We are one meter down, the mood is up. No rain. the rain is gone. Jesus, if you hear me, thank you. Jesus or any religion god that controls any kind of water system. Done, guys. Look at this. This is smooth as hell, isn't it? As you can see, this point over here is higher than the pipe. And we continue making the top part of the walls flat. This will make direct contact with the roof, sealing the inside and making sure there's the least possible gaps in between. It's a sunny day, so we don't need the top. If I die here, at least my mother will have some nice videos. Okay, so it's a sunny day up here. We have all the material, let's uh, put it in. Is the drill broken? 
No, I think it's uh, the wood is wet, so it makes mm. it like a lot. Ah, uh, yeah, the drill is broken. Keep it down up there. <laughs> Trying to sleep. <laughs> The prunings are done. Next step, the cork and in between the... Uh, if you want. Mm -hmm. Easy. Mm -mm. Now you can take it. Thank you, Julien. You're welcome. This weights a ton. I will put it uh, straight to the top. Yeah, come on. Okay. Can somebody help me take it up? Oh. up? You can leave it, Julien. We don't have more space here. Okay. Now measuring the last piece and it needs to be 59 John Nice, look at the puzzle Whoa. Well very long day, it's getting quite dark, but well, at least we managed to put this layer on. No, oh, just missing Colleen. I think we tarp it up. Fine. What? Fine, no, I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can. Okay, so we're putting the, uh, the foil now. Uh, we have to put it now because tomorrow it's gonna rain, but it's getting dark, so. Do you know how I open? Okay, yeah, I think we just, yeah, we roll it, no staple, and... Ah, oh, yeah, true, we, we, we can change it later. Okay, so this is uh, done for now. Uh, then, yeah, it's late. We're quite tired. Let's go eat now. Uh, when we were putting up the water barrier foil earlier, it got very dark, so we uh, couldn't finish. So right now, me and Ruben are um, cutting the edges of the foil and stapling it down to the wood. Okay, so today we have to install the rafters, the battens, and if we have time, the roof tiles. We have all the material already prepared here, stacked. It's our last week of work here. We basically only have like good weather today, so Nobody's around. <laughs> okay, time to install the rafters.
John said, we're putting these because then birds can't come. Ah, yes, yes. yes. And animals can't crawl. That's the reason. Okay, so now we have to put the last layer of the roof. So battens on and then roof tiles. Slap that. Is it on on your side? Yeah. It's not really touching anything. Time to get the roof tiles. <laughs> uh, we got a call from a friend that they might have some, so let's see what we find. Okay, okay so we are here at the house of a friend of us, Anna. They called us to take their roof tiles. And even more luckily, the guys are taking around the roof tiles, so we only need to show them where the land is and drive the pickup. <laughs> Tiles are uh, losing some pieces, and they say it's because of the frost. And this roof has more than 30 years. We are not getting the broken ones; we're getting the roof ones, but they are changing half of it. This should be enough. Dirty tiles. So what do we do with dirty tiles? We clean them, so you now can delete your YouTube comment about more stuff you already did. <laughs> no more money. Uh, of a hair scalpel, you know, yeah. a skin scalpel. Yeah. Forfura in, in, in Italian. Shampoo. Yeah. The dirty roof tiles are clean there. Here we put the clean ones. So time to remove the top. First tile. First tile of the roof. Second tile. Third tile. Half of the roof done. Coming here again. Yeah. Uh, some of the tiles we don't take because they're. I don't know if you can see, but the clay and we're also checking the grip here. If it's gone, we're not taking them. And some of them are just weird, odd shapes. So that means it's just the wrong kind of tile. That's what you have to deal with when you're uh, second handing everything. But All it's those are denied. <laughs> Pauline, what is happening? It's uh, raining! But it's raining so strong! What we gotta do, Colleen? We still? We push it! Push, push it, it to the limit!
John, yeah. you verify it, everything is good. You, yeah, I'm just uh, directing the work here, shouting yeah. at people, mm -hmm. making them do their work. And everything is good or not? Yeah, kind of. I mean, no. it's raining, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is the last tile, no? Last tile. And then this one. Stuck. So ah. Come on, I catch you. <laughs> we'll put a little bit of lime in here, but uh, it's time for dinner and shower and bed. And getting dry. This is not gonna be possible. <laughs> we glued the top tiles together with a bit of lime. And the roof is done. It looks nice, already looks like a house, but it isn't finished yet. Team will now start to work on the window and the door. But in between, I have something to show you, right there, down the land, where our famous pipe is. We're gonna transform it. So here we have the opened up pipe. And the pipe goes underground here. Just to explain, some months ago we found an underground pipe system in our land. The pipe comes from our pond, passes next to the office and ends next to the big ruin. But it has some problems and leaks. Let me show you what happened so far. So here we are at the end of the pipe where the water flows out. The pipe was a bit unusual because you have a big pipe and a small pipe inside. We didn't really understand what was going on. So we're trying to pull out the inner pipe to understand a bit better what's going on because it seemed like a very unusual thing. When we put this online, you guys had a lot of comments and know exactly what was going on. Uh, very coherent replies from everyone, all agreeing on exactly the same concept. No, not true, takes a lot of filtering because there were a bunch of different suggestions. But overall, two theories. The first theory is that the small pipe is actually the real pipe transporting the water and the outer pipe is just added as a protective sleeve to make sure it doesn't damage. The second theory was the outer pipe was actually the original one and at some point it broke and they added a piece of pipe inside to fix it. Both options are possible, but it's very hard to tell from the outside because they look exactly the same. So you can't really tell what's going on inside. So we figured let's settle it and cut open the pipe at the beginning so we can see what's going on because if it's the first theory we would see two pipes a big one and a small one and if it's the second theory we should only see one big pipe so let me show you so there's the beginning of the pipe let's have a look at it what we find it is one big pipe so no inner tube meaning theory two was applied here well done theory two people so yeah, it's kind of fun and useful to know how these techniques have been applied. But in the end, we still have the exact same problem. We have a pipe here that leaks, it's broken, and it's just a piece of plastic laying in the ground. We don't like, so we want to get rid of it and take it out. But we're going to apply something else instead of just throwing it away. And first step is taking it out. But the downside is it's going under this road. And it's pretty hard and compacted here, plus a lot of rocks, which makes it very hard to dig. Plus, it's pretty deep as well, so digging it by hand is going to be very exhausting with a lot of back pain. So if only we had a tool to make it go faster. Thank you. 
So the pipe is now out. A little bit uh, bended and damaged along the way, but it was already broken. And I also noticed there's a connector here in the middle that connected those big two tubes together. But uh, nothing special. So I guess we just take it out and try to level it again. And in case you didn't know, this is a public road that goes across our land. So the neighbors also use it. It's funny the trouble this pipe brings. Also some parts where uh, I hit them with the digger, so they got broken. And it's really this very stiff plastic material, which is kind of cool as well. So we figured, let's see if we can do something else with that. So I brought the pipe up and cut it into pieces. They were covered in mud and dirt, so I gave them a deep clean. Much better. And as you can see, the pipe was full of cracks. Some from the digger, but most came like this. Plus, we saw that they were made of LDPE plastic which means they're recyclable. So we packed them up and our video maker Guy went to visit our friends in the Precious Plastic workspace, about three hours away from Project Camp. We gave them the pipe to transform it into something new. They shredded the pipe into smaller pieces. And these small flakes got heated up and molded into new objects. We tried a few different items, just to test the material and see what's possible. If you're interested to see the entire process of melting the pipe and transforming it, make sure to go to the Precious Plastic YouTube channel, because they made a special video just about this. The link in the description. And especially for you, we made a souvenir pack from Project Camp. It contains two hooks, a badge and a piece of spiky bush. But we only have 10 kits available. So if you ever wanted to own a piece of Project Camp, now you can but you probably have to be fast. You can find them and a bunch of other recycled plastic products on the Precious Plastic Bazaar. Also linked below. Meanwhile, we have still much more plastic from the pipe available and would love to turn it into other useful things. So let us know if you have any ideas or suggestions of things to make. Drop them in the comments below. Okay, time to go back to the ruin and wrap up the project. Now that the roof is done, we're gonna continue to close the rest of the building for winter. And next step is the door. Goodbye old hinges. Opa. Oh, there we go. Hello. We have a beautiful door that's going to go into the granite ruin. Um, so it's time to make a door frame for it. We had some wood pre-cut by a carpenter because we are running short on time. So um, putting together some final adjustments to make it all fit. That's what we're going to get started with today. Yay! We have a door, we have a door frame, we have a place where it's all gonna go. Uh, we're gonna see if it fits, which it will. Phew. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Time to drill.
Okay, und dann? I was getting some complaints of non-Dutch people that they were tripping over this. So, uh, happy to finally take it out. <laughs> Slap that wood. Finally, I can pass through. Colleen built a step. So it's the moment of truth for the door. I'm hoping for a near perfect fit in the frame. So. It's pretty good, huh? Now, how do hinges work? It's the real moment of truth. We are going to fit the door into the hinges, hopefully. Okay. Okay. Shit. Oh my goodness. Ciao, Colleen. Hey. At the same time, John Conti was working on the big window. We have to fill up the space here. We have a lot of uh, leftover cuts from the boards, from the roof, so we can use those. And also fill it up with uh, insulation. Let's do this. This is what this left over. We finished the inside, the wood, which looks nice. We put now the insulation layer here. Nice. Okay, last piece now. Beautiful. Like it, Ruben? I'm very happy, yeah. We're gonna install uh, the um, window frame. We had the pieces already cut and prepared at length by a local carpenter. So, let's do this. In the meantime, we coated all the wood with oil to protect it, including this window that we got second hand from our neighbors. They are installed. A 
after all this time, it's finally time to put in the final piece. The door goes in. Stop, Ruben. Hi. <laughs> Good job. You made it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So it's done. It's been a long journey to get until here. Last year we invited you all to come and help us renovate this old ruin. And some did. And now it's here. It used to be an overgrown pile of stones, and now it's more like a habitable pile of stones. And it turned out to have quite a nice unique view. But there's still a lot to do. Finishing the interior, installing a permanent floor, and figure out what to do with the bottom part. But that will be for next season. For now we're happy with what has been done and all the details. And finally the last moment of the season, wrapping up, yeah. packing and cleaning everything ready to leave the camp for winter. But first we had a little contest to set, the Pond Olympics. That was funny. Oh no! She's here! Oh my god! Yeah! <laughs> Might have been the safest thing we've done this season. And we also had a special dinner to celebrate, being all together one last moment.
And then the people left. No, it wasn't from that. I got it from another thing. All right, so that was it for season four. It's done. It's always a little bit sad to see everyone leaving. So I figured what better way to record it than in the rain. Also, then you don't see the tears. But to be fair, it's also kind of nice to have some more peace and less things going on. Um, and we can reflect and see a bit how things went and plan the next year. Overall, quite happy that we finished the ruin on time because it looks really nice, but also that it's dry for the winter because a lot of rain is coming, which is also cool to see how the water basin, whether it's gonna fill up. And fridge box, hopefully it stays dry, I think it will. Um, if you do want to have some updates and see how this goes, make sure to subscribe on Patreon because throughout the winter we will post a few updates how it's going here. And also financially this helps the project a lot because if you support there, uh, we get a bit more income throughout the winter and the more support we have, the bigger projects we can take on next year. So highly appreciate it if you support on Patreon. And if you want to help out in season five, whether it's in construction, the kitchen or landscaping, uh, we put the applications online so you can sign up. They are on support.projectcamp.com. So have a look to see if something fits you. And you can see us back here on YouTube in April or on Patreon in the winter. I guess that's it for now. There's one last clip uh, with the people in Project Camp who recorded. They wrote a nice little song and I would highly recommend to watch it until the end. Thank you guys for watching all year and see you next year. Have a good winter. Ah, and one more thing.